What's good everybody watching another episode of Know This. Today I want y'all to know some news. So I brought in uh, some of our friends from colorlines.com. They are a spot that's news for action and actually one of my favorite websites for checking out what's good and just broader national news, world news, pop culture, politics, they cover everything and they do it with a cool racial justice lens that I think is really progressive and really interesting. So here we have the news editor of colorlines.com, Jamila King. So thank you for joining us. Thanks for being here. First, how would you describe what colorlines.com represents in terms of this new wave of online news making? So colorlines.com is a site that's by and for a multi-generational and multi-racial group of folks. And so we're basically trying to highlight race and tell folks that it's okay to talk about race. Mm -hmm. That, you know, we have this sort of national affliction of not being able to talk about race, of being mm -hmm. really afraid of it. And we're telling folks that, look, you can talk about it. You can talk about it in an engaging way. You can talk about it in a meaningful way mm -hmm. and actually provide tools for folks to get themselves ready to fight for the issues that they, that they care about. All right, so what do we have on deck? What's, what's making news? So the big news this week is the opening of the Martin Luther King Memorial, which mm -hmm. is a very monumental occasion. Mm -hmm. It's a very important occasion, but it's also sort of this, this new moment, this new chapter in our yeah. ongoing national fiction around the fact that we're over race. Yeah, um, exactly. yeah but actually in the, in the article that you had, there's a poll um, that you looked at that said, eight in 10 whites say blacks have an equal chance in their community to get any kind of job for which they are qualified, while only six in 10 African American, well, while six in 10 African Americans say job discrimination persists. Right. So there's obviously some disparity in how people are envisioning this dream still being possible to be fulfilled on like an equal basis. Right. And, and that's, you know, that's really symbolic of the sort of media that we're getting where mm -hmm. we're not talking about the fact that black unemployment, for instance, is, has mm -hmm. been double the national average for well over, for, you know, years, but spe specifically two years since the recession ended. Mm -hmm. um, and so if we're not actually talking about ways, okay, so there are, you know, millions of black men, for instance, who can't find jobs. There yeah. are millions of black people in general who can't find jobs. Then we're not going to get to this analysis of, of white folks thinking, oh, everything's great, and black people being like, nah, dude, yeah. like, there's some problems. Because they want to point, well, like, well, the highest office, the right. biggest job is being held by a black man. Right. But even now, I mean, Maxine Waters was recently in the news right. just calling out Obama, saying, we're sick of this, you're not paying attention right. um, to the black community, not paying attention to a lot of underserved communities in, in the way that you really said you were going to. So that's interesting to kind of now see that the clash is, is rising up and people are getting fed up. Right. And you hear that a lot. I think that black lawmakers specifically have always been a little skeptical of Obama mm -hmm. because he has sort of risen to this multicultural platform mm -hmm. that folks were a little uneasy with. Mm -hmm. um, and frankly, he could do more for everybody, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. He could, like his, his administration could have a specific jobs plan and they mm -hmm. could have had one long ago. Mm -hmm. And they haven't for whatever political reasons that exist. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I think folks like Maxine Waters and mm -hmm. other critics of Obama have been right in saying that, you know, you're touring rural communities and that's fine and great, but you know, mm -hmm. go to South Central, yeah. go to bed -Stuy, go to places where people actually are living this experience day to day and that, you know, these are the same folks who are really excited to get him in office yeah. and at the same time, you know, Feeling three years later, right? Yeah. So, what are yeah. a couple of things being talked about? I don't know, in, in Hollywood, I know we have The Help right. that's been pretty controversial. Tons of articles have been, you know, there's, it's been in the news a lot already, but mm -hmm. it did recently become the number one movie in America, right? right. What, what have you seen kind of happening on the, in the comments in, on your site? So there have been two reactions. Mm -hmm. um, we have a gender columnist named Akiba, Akiba Solomon who's mm -hmm. excellent at this sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. And she wrote a column a couple weeks ago saying, I'm not going to go see it. Mm -hmm. Why would I go see this? There are too mm -hmm. many group hugs in the trailer for me to think that, you know, to be a poor black woman in Mississippi during the civil rights movement was a great thing. Mm -hmm. um, I took a different path. I went mm -hmm. and saw it with my mother. And that mm -hmm. was a really interesting experience because I think there's a generational difference in how the movie is perceived. I okay. think that older folks, um, you know, it, it, again, going back to this sort of like, we, we like storytelling, right? Mm -hmm. we, we like our national stories, we like our national fictions. And I think that um, for me, I was very upset because it was a complete whitewashing of the civil rights movement as I read and, and heard mm -hmm. about it, you know, secondhand. It, it made it seem as though like white people were sort of leading the civil rights movement. They were sort of leading these small individual acts of kindness mm -hmm. that like led black people out of, yeah. you know, whatever. And, you know, that's, that's hard because actually like, the reality is that white people were the help in the civil yeah. rights movement, and yeah. that movie didn't really capture that at all. Interesting. So I want to bring up a specific article that I saw. I know it's about a month old now, but it was on creation. Right. Or, am I saying her name right? Creation? Creation? I 
think it's Creation. Okay, Creation. Okay. So she's a, a white girl rapper representing a white girl mob, as she likes to call it. Right. And this article highlighted that she was quoted saying that, you know, sometimes it's it was hard being white um, in terms of reflecting on her background of growing up as a white girl in the hood. Right. And people were just kind of up in arms about that because it's just kind of like, really? <laughs> <laughs> You know, creation, deservedly so, has uh -huh. been getting hated on coast to coast. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's a tough spot because on the one hand, there are all kids in the street in Oakland who I know mm -hmm. who love creation, mm -hmm. who love that sort of just, I don't give, you know, like, I don't care about mm -hmm. what I'm saying. I'm just going to go do it. I'm just going to be mm -hmm. flashy and be ridiculous. And that's me. Mm -hmm. um, on the other hand, you have creation saying things like it was hard to be a white girl in the hood. Mm -hmm. And I think that that, for me, kind of speaks to the fact that this is a, what, 20, 19-year-old girl mm -hmm. who probably has no race analysis, right? Mm -hmm. And so the problem isn't necessarily what she's saying, it's the fact that she has such a big platform on which to say it. Yeah. And there's so many other really amazingly talented artists of color mm -hmm. in Oakland and other places of the country who don't get that same exposure. Yeah. And so she's, you know, in the same way that Eminem was sort of like, this token product that could be mass marketed. I think industry sees her like that and you know, Eminem was actually talented and now uh -huh. she's just there, right? And so yeah. I think the fact that we're we're just hearing about her all the time, people are just annoyed, right? Yeah. Like I don't I don't wanna hear about creation all the yeah. time. I wanna hear about an artist who, you know, I like and she can make her music and that's fine, but let's not give her this massive platform until she shows that she actually has yeah. something to bring. Except and also I know we just happened to talk about a lot of topics that, you know, highlighted uh, between black and white. Right. But colorlines.com also covers other stories that right. include everybody. Like you said, right. your multiracial, multicultural right. audience. Yeah, and so you know, so much of the conversation around race in America has been black and white, mm -hmm. but we, you know, talk about native folks, we talk about Asian American folks. We talk mm -hmm. about Indian folks. Like, mm -hmm. we talk about the diversity of America and not just to say that, oh, look at America, we're so great, but mm -hmm. to talk about all these different experiences that inform what we do daily. Mm -hmm. And so that's that's on the site. Um, yeah. I think you see that in several different stories. We try and keep a good balance, a good mix, yeah. and we're going to keep trying in the future. Yeah. So if you didn't know about colorlines.com, about all the issues we talked about today, now you know. We'll see you next time.